Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Hands. Uh, I thought we'd do something different this time. Uh, instead of watching me draw, I will, so, uh, I will show you how some of my drawings and stills from videos look uh, as I rant. Uh, today's question comes from Gregory Wes. Uh, he asks, uh, have you ever considered converting to the Catholic faith? I should, I should warn everyone, because I know that there are a lot of Catholics watching me, that this will be an offensive episode. Um, I will try to keep my compo composure, but uh, uh, as you all well know, I lose it sometimes, so I apologize in advance. So, did I ever consider becoming Catholic? Uh, well, you see, uh, my, uh, as some of you probably know, my family isn't religious. My uh, my uh, dad's an atheist. My mother never practiced religion. So, <clears throat> however, uh, despite all that, and somehow God only knows why and how, I was always uh, very religious. Even uh, even since I was very little, I was uh, always absolutely fascinated with religious edifices and so on. Um, that developed over time, of course, um, <clears throat> and when I became older. Uh, and when I decided to start attending church, I made a conscious, conscious choice. Whether will I be Catholic or whether I will be Orthodox. I never considered Protestantism, because I cannot, honest, uh, I cannot honestly uh, consider uh, any religion that was formed one millennia and half after its founder is gone. So that was never an option. So it was Catholic or, or uh, Catholo Catholo Catholicism or Orthodoxy. So why did I choose Orthodoxy? <coughs> well, there are multiple reasons. Um, let me start with the most important one, but the less important ones are the more painful ones. The the less important one, uh, the 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 more important ones that are less painful, uh, are the doctrinal reasons. Uh, it always seemed that change came from uh, from the Catholics, you know? Oh, they're the ones who removed leaven from the bread. Oh, they started pouring cold water into the chalice. Oh, they inserted filioque into, uh, into the clause. Oh, now they proclaim the assumption of Mary a dogma. Now Immaculate Conception is a dogma. Now People Infallibility is a dogma. And it's a constant change, change, change. So, it, uh, it, I just don't buy it, you know? Uh, is Assumption of Mary so important? It's not. I mean, I I firmly be believe that she ascended into heavens, but does it matter? No. Does it have to be dogma? Absolutely not. But those are uh, that's just doctrine. Uh, and I can talk about it a lot, but uh, I already have my sense. Now, uh, the other part is the unfortunate history of Serbs with Roman Catholicism. Um, regarding this drawing, this was the original attempt at drawing conversion of St. Paul, but when I drew this thumbnail, um, I drew it accidentally on this paper and it uh, it went through and it ruined this drawing, which is a shame because I think that the horse turned out way better than in the second drawing, but it is what it is. Anyway, um, Unfortunate uh, history of Ser uh, of Serbs with Roman Catholicism. A lot of uh, a lot of you guys ask me what do I think about Eastern Catholicism, and my opinions aren't good because uh, a typical man from West will think, oh well, Cath Catholics believe that the Church is universal, that uh, it has multiple rights, and you can choose any right you want. Uh, uh, I especially hate when they say, oh, I'm Eastern Catholic, I have the best of the both worlds. That's simply not true. And uh, some history is in order. Uh, because <clears throat> I feel that a lot of uh, uh, history of uh, Eastern Catholicism is simply trying to get Orthodox into the fold while keeping uh, the exterior Orthodox. And usually um, with some foul political play, um, <clears throat> For example, uh, have you ever thought why uh, there are some Orthodox saints in Catholic calendar? Rad like Saint uh, Sergius of Radonezh, like Saint Seraphim of Sarov. Uh, in uh, Serbia we have a Catholic church that has fresco of Saint Sava of Serbia, 
uh, in its altar. Uh, it isn't ecumenism, it's simply, oh, you can keep your saint, just join the Catholics. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, so, uh, I think that how Eastern Catholicism was originally envisioned is very sly, very despicable, uh, and uh, I just don't don't have a lot of positive opinions about it. Uh, this is this isn't my overall opinion of Eastern Catholicism. There are some Eastern churches that have kept uh, communion unbroken with the Roman Catholic Church, and that's fine. Uh, but uh, the sly politics, no. Um, however, <clears throat> there is something uh, worse. Um, and that is uh, uh, the history uh, of Serbs during the Second World War and its extremely unfortunate relation with, with Roman Catholicism. Um, because uh, during the Second World War there were some extremely, extremely gruesome uh, crimes committed against the Serbs in uh, Croatia. Um, uh, they were they were horrible. Like uh, they literally outdone the Nazis. Uh, some uh, Nazi Obermeister even uh, wrote Hitler and said that Croats outdid them in cruelty. And in some parts of Croatia, uh, Serbs uh, uh, Serbs uh, called Italian fascists liber liberators uh, because they freed them from uh, Catholic Ustashas or to say Croatian Nazis. Um, one of those fascists, when he witnessed what Cro uh, Croats did in one uh, Serbian classroom, uh, he wrote a letter uh, to, uh, to his superior and said, what has transpired here is eternal shame of the Roman Church, and it's true, of our Roman Church, that is how he put it, and it's totally true. Um, uh, so you might say, oh boy and well, that's like 50 years ago, that's old news, People have moved on. No, people haven't moved on. Uh, I'll give you two concrete examples of this. Uh, for example, there is a push to uh, to canonize <coughs> to canonize um, Aloysius Stepinac. He was a Catholic cardinal of Zagreb during the Second World War. And the best thing I can say about this man is that he wasn't as evil as his co-workers at the time. That is literally the best I can say. Uh, he uh, he has kept quiet uh, quite considerably, uh, but I don't think that uh, that uh, that is even the worst case. The worst case is, well, um, you see, during the Second uh, World War, the Croatian leader was called uh, Ante Pavelic, and uh, you know he died in Ar Argentina, I think, during the seventies, which is shocking. He should have died in the 40s at the latest, if you know what I mean. A fitting image for him, if I might say so. And there was a, ma a requiem mass in, uh, um, in, ca uh, in Cathedral of Zagreb uh, for his repose. Uh, just to say how shocking this is, this is like having a requiem mass for Hitler in St. Hedwig's Cathedral in Berlin. That is shameful. That is absolutely shameful. Um, now, I, uh, in my opinion, uh, the altar where, uh, where that mass was served uh, should be destroyed with a sledgehammer. Uh, the pieces of that altar, all of all of the vestments uh, and vessels used in that mass, should be all thrown in a cesspool. Uh, a new altar should be erected with a simple writing on it that says. Uh, for the forgiveness of all the sins during the Second World War. You know? It is simply shameful. Uh, I don't think this is something that generally gets uh, discussed uh, in the... in... Uh, uh, during the ecumenical conversations. Mm, I don't think even it uh, should, at least in that, because it is a a more of a thing between Croats and Serbs, but there is a definite spiritual... Um, a dimension of it, you know? Uh, uh, we all fail to follow Christ to, uh, to our fullness. But what, uh, but what has transpired uh, during the 40s is absolute evil. 
This isn't like in German Germany where you have, you know, the constant tension between the Nazi party and Catholic Church. No, you uh, here you have a complete fusion of church and absolute evil. Um, honestly, I could not face my... Uh, uh, face my ancestors and tell them I have converted to Roman Catholicism. Um, frankly, I don't mind if you pray for Ante Pavelic, if you pray for Hitler. Um, you can serve Mass for Satan, as far as I'm concerned. It won't do him any good, but it is a good intention. You can serve a Mass for Hitler or Ante Pavelic, but don't make it public. It's scandalous, it's shameful. And um, uh, one nice piece of uh, hypocrisy, uh, this liberal um, journalist asked uh, the priest, who has, I think he served, or at least allowed the Mass to be served, and, uh, um, and uh, he asked, uh, she asked him, uh, how on earth can you serve the Mass for that villain? And he said, well, uh, church, uh, for church uh, should be forgiving, we should pray for everyone, for everyone's salvation, even for Pavelic. And she says, mm -hmm. so will he hold a mass for Tito, that is the communist leader of Yugoslavia? And uh, and uh, immediately the priest goes, <laughs> as someone has prudently said, the Catholic Church will sell its soul to the devil to fight communism, and it's true. At least in Croatia, it sold its soul to... I don't want even to say Nazism, because Nazism was nicer uh, to what was happening in Croatia at that time. It, it really was. You can read about it. Mm, the, the crimes were simply... Uh, and they, uh, they weren't just blessed by the clergy. Oftentimes, they were personally performed by the clergy. Uh, there is a, this specific case of... I can't remember his name... But he was called Friar Satan by Serbs. He actually engaged in um, uh, in um, competition with his uh, um, with other Rustashas in a concentration camp. Who will kill more? Uh, uh, who will kill more Serbs with a sledgehammer? I mean, that's I I I don't know. I think that's pretty rude. 